Pen pastels are a dry medium for color and they work like fluid paint. And they're designed and made for artists, but in our studio, we've been finding so many ways to use them with our craft projects. And I wanted to share with you guys how we use them and some of the techniques that we use. Also wanted to let you know that we have this beautiful seven piece set. This is the colors we use the most in our studio. This special set is available at dickblick.com or in select Blick stores. Just to give you an example of some of the things that we have done, here's some tulips, and this is all extra fine crepe paper. And this is the orange crepe paper where we've made the gradation just by using the sponge and creating some of this colored variants with the dark plum. Also, a little bit of extra color on these thistle where we added this pale lavender pastel to the green, and it gave it that really frosted look. Now, we added the pastel before we actually did the fringing, and that makes it a lot easier. You know, we've done some greenery. This is the heavy crepe paper. Here's one where she added the color with the fig leaf, and in that case, she would use a very stiff brush and just add the light color in, in lines. You can see here, I wanted to show you guys a variation. This is a crocus without the pan pastel and then the crocus with the pan pastel. They're both beautiful. You can just add a little extra variety and some difference by using the pan pastel. You can take off the cover. This is to keep things clean. We have a stack of these in our studio where we just keep them all on the shelf just like that and then we're, when we're ready to use them, there you go. And you can see that they pop in and out. So once you've finished one of the pans, you can replace it with another color or with the same color. The name's on the back, so that's really easy to do. So here's a sample of all seven of the colors on a light colored crepe paper. You can see it. And you know, just to let you know, the team who makes flowers with me love working with the sponges, where I prefer the brushes. So there's a lot of options for you. F figure out what works best for you. If you're using either the sponge or the brush, you can wash them out just like any other tool, or you can also just kind of rub them on a paper towel to clean them. And we sort of keep using them over and over. We like the colors blended anyway, so that works really nicely. So I've cut out some pretend petals here. These aren't real ones. And this is from our double-sided crepe paper. Now this will work with extra fine, double-sided, or the heavy, all three of them. So our sponge method, I'll use one of these triangle sponges. And I think that I like this color. So I'm just gonna dab it. I often like to use the flat end, but you can also use the pointed end. And I'll start at the base where I want the most color. And then work my way up to give it a nice gradation. If you want, you can flip it over and use a clean side. So you can kind of blend it using different sides of your sponges. You can also wash the sponges and just wash them in, you know, a dish soap and leave them out to dry. And you can see how pretty that looks. So there's a nice gradation. So this is our basic technique of how we would use it with crepe paper. Another way that we might use it is with the brush. And you can see here on this Gerber Daisy where I added some color right in the center. And that's where I would take a brush like this and dip it into my orange and just pat it right into that flower. You can kind of shake it off or blow it off. Get those extra bits. So I've showed you how to use the sponge on a petal. Let's see what a brush looks like. This works really nice too. You just very gently brush it on, maybe like you would, you know, your eyeshadow. And I think the thing that you might keep in mind is if you want to go back over and blend it, just go ahead and tap and brush some of this off. You might even want to keep a clean towel there and then you can work it back the other way. So as far as brushes go, you could probably use pretty much anything. I wouldn't use something that's really stiff and harsh, maybe a bit softer because you want the softness of the, of the brush to go right into you know, the crepe paper. If it's too rough, it might tear it up a bit. So if I get some yellow up there and I don't want it there, let's see if I can get that off. This is a semi-clean brush. Not really. It actually does stick fairly well. 
You could blend it, but I suppose just like paint, once you get it on, there's really no way to get it off. So it might take a little bit of practice, but the results are just gorgeous. I mean, look how beautiful that gradation is. So for this petal, I'm going to blend two different colors. I've started with this orange and I'll go for this magenta on the other side. Notice I've put a piece of brown paper. This can get a little bit messy. I think when you're doing a two color blend, it's always good to work back and forth. So I did this heavy coloring just as an example. I don't think I would do this for an actual project. I just wanted to see how far we could go. Usually we would just add a touch of color. We have so many crepe paper colors that I could have used a hot pink and then blended in some orange or vice versa. Now something like this where I've put on a lot of color and this is a crepe, I would go ahead and spray it just to make sure that the color stays. This is quite a bit of color and I think that if you touch the petals, it will come off. I went ahead and sprayed it. It does make the paper, the crepe paper curl just a little bit because crepe paper is sensitive to moisture. It's now dry. So once your crepe paper has the coloring put on it is when you would start to do the stretch. And you can see it's not really picking up on my fingers as I'm stretching it. The spray actually worked really nice and I can still stretch it just fine. And look how beautiful that is. Another place that we just discovered using the pan pastels is with felt. And she used a brush for this case where she just went in with this pink. This is these two pinks we use a lot and just very, very gently brush that in. And it stays really well on the felt. It seems to go right into the fibers. So you don't need to do anything to keep it on. It really works just like it, it, as you see it, it won't fall off unless you, I suppose, rub it really hard. So another way that we have used pan pastels that's a little bit different is with a frosted paper. Now frosted paper is smooth and it has a bit of a finish. So the trick that we use to get around this, and you can see this in the tutorial for this lotus flower, she went ahead and painted the pan pastel onto the paper and then used a finish and just lightly sprayed and let that dry. Now, we've also done this with this flower. She, you know, put the finish on this. She did a gloss finish on this one where we didn't do a gloss on this. So you can kind of see the difference. And this is what we used. It's the clear, low odor, clear gloss finish. And this one's glossy. And then there's also a dull finish. So those are the three ways that we use pan pastels and we're going to keep using them. We're going to experiment. We'll use them in more videos and in our tutorials. So keep your eye out and make sure you guys give it a try.